welcome back to another TechMinds video. In this episode, we're going to take a brief look at another VHF and UHF handheld called the Giant Pi 8R. Now this radio is being advertised as a four band radio and that's because it supports RX and TX between 136 to 174 MHz, 220 to 270, 350 to 390 and 400 to 480 MHz. Now the power output on the spec sheet is also listed at less than 15 watts. Well, I'll show you the true power output shortly. Now the AR comes with everything that you would expect, desktop charger, manual in Chinese, antenna, which I'm pleased to report covers two of the four supported bands, which is 136 to 174 and 400 to 520. So the essential dual band antenna for 270 is supported. Now the AR, surprisingly enough, does actually feel quite nice in the hand. Slightly curved sides with the red PTT button, a blue button to switch between VFO and memories, and two further function buttons below the PTT. Now the right side of the radio has a covered speaker mic connection, which also doubles up as a programming port for when connecting to the PC for memory programming. The top of the AR, we find the antenna connection, which appears to be a reversed male SMA a continuous rotary channel change control, and of course the on and off, which is also used to control this radio speaker volume. The removable light iron battery provides 7.4 volts with a 5,500 milliamp hour capacity, although I cannot confirm that apart from what it says on the label. The color display is quite a nice touch with each of the four supported bands being shown at the same time. You can navigate between each of these bands by pressing the exit button. If you have programmed some memories into the radio, you can press the blue side button to change between VFO and memory recall mode. If you have programmed name tags, then the name tag of the memory will also be shown on the display. What you'll also notice is that the screen will show you a live level mic indication. I guess this is useful to know that your mic is working when you're transmitting. Now the audio from both the RX and TX sound rather good. So to test this, I connected my all-star node to the parrot and this is what it sounded like. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing one, two, three, four, five. This is M0 DQW testing. Playback. This is M0 DQW testing. The menu system is also fairly easy to operate with the ability to control all radio functions from this same menu, which makes it easy to change things like turning off that annoying beep sound when you're pressing buttons. Of course, you can also change all of these settings via the PC software with the added benefit of backing up those settings. The programming software is fairly similar to others that we've seen before. Firstly, you'll have the memory management area where you can program new channels. And then there will be the features and options screen where you can change how the radio operates. Now there are some little quirks with the software. For example, if you want to change the display to show memory names instead of channels or frequencies, then you need to change this on the radio itself as the software seems to be missing that option from the dropdown. However, it definitely makes it a lot easier to program local repeaters into the radio. With the AR connected to my power meter, we can see a power output of around 6 watts at 145.500 megahertz. At 220 megahertz, we can see an output power of just over 3 watts. At 435 megahertz, in the middle of the 70 centimeter handband, we see around 3 watts. And if we move up into the PMR band on 446, we see an output of just below 3 watts. Now just to be clear here, I did not recharge the battery at all. The battery level in this video at this time is as it was when it arrived via the postal service from China. 
Therefore, with a full charge, the power output on each band may be larger. Now, to program the 8R, I used one of these multi-radio programming cables, which has been a complete lifesaver when it comes to trying to find a programming cable for the radio. Now, I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in getting one of these cables yourself. Anyhow, guys, there we go. A brief overview of the Zion Pi 8R radio. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm fully aware that this radio is not one made from the top tier radio manufacturers like Yaesu, Kenwood, or even Icom. But what you're getting here is a nice entry level radio for VHF and UHF bands. Now, as we all know, you get what you pay for. But sometimes, just sometimes, you get a little bit more than what you bargain for. Until the next video, take care, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.